How is Atlanta preparing for what seems to be an expanding crisis? Well, I think we're doing uh, several things. We are <clears throat> obviously in our hospitals and almost daily operations trying to figure out how do we expand bed capacity, how do we uh, uh, increase the number of ICU beds, how do we get so get the appropriate supplies of, of pr personal protective equipment, a laboratory tests, uh, ventilators, and it's really, a, really a, literally like preparing for war. You're getting everything ready for, for the onslaught, but at the same time, patients are already coming in <clears throat> and the number of patients is increasing. So uh, we, we are having a, a, to cope with <coughs> With not with prepare, preparing as you as you battle, right? As you're in the front lines, already take, doing right. the things you're trying to prepare, and that I think it's <clears throat> is the most challenging part. Carlos Del Rio on the cover of the New York Times today is the death of a very healthy, I'm going to say, 35 or 40 year old nurse in New York City. We are having a debate over the bid process of ventilators. Explain to our audience the critical importance of ventilators in an ICU, or frankly, just within the general hospital. What does a ventilator actually mean to the doctors and nurses begging for them? So when you have somebody critically ill with a pneumonia, as the lungs get filled with inflammatory cells, the space in the lungs where the oxygen comes in and goes into the blood is filled with, with, with inflammation, with, with inflammatory cells, with, with infection, and therefore oxygen is unable to get into the blood. So the, the oxygen inside the blood starts going down, and when our body senses the lack of oxygen, then we start getting short of breath. And you get to a point that you can increase the percentage of oxygen you give somebody, but at some point in time, you have the person in 100% oxygen. We normally are at 20% oxygen. And at 100% oxygen, and the, the, you're still not getting enough oxygen in there. So you have to then put a tube down our windpipe and hook it to a machine that is going to not only give you more oxygen, but also pressure it in, right? Push it in. And that's called a ventilator. A ventilator really right. takes, <clears throat> takes, puts pressure into, into, into the air that goes into your lungs as a way to try to, to get that oxygen into the blood. So it's really something you use when you have somebody with what we call severe hypoxia. It's, it's, in other words, a drop in oxygen, and we have somebody what's called, you know, ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and it's really to get them through the acute event uh, of that process until their lungs heal, and then you can get them off the ventilator. So it really is a way to, to support somebody through that critical process. Right. And, a and as the governor, as the governor, of New York, the governor of New York said something that I think is very important. It's only about three percent. It's only about three percent of the people that end up that have coronavirus infection that end up in the ICU. So it's a minority. But that minority, given the number of infections, is actually a really large number. Dr. Del Rio, with your STEAM career in Mexico and at Emory University in Atlanta, what would be your counsel to Dr. Fauci to explain to a, some would suggest, anti-science White House that right now medical science matters. What's the best practice for the gentleman from Holy Cross? Well, you know, I think I've known uh, Dr. Fauci for many years, and I think there's nobody better than him to do this. He has been advisor to eight presidents during major crises from, from HIV, as I'd say people, is from A to Z. He's gone from AIDS to Zika and in between. And he really is an absolute expert and a master, quite frankly, in doing that. I don't think anybody can, can speak truth to power like he can, has. And in fact, he's done that. He has even, you know, contradicted and gone against the president in the podium. So I have a lot of respect for him. He is a straight talker. He's a straight shooter. He's a listener. But he says it as it is. And I think that's what he continues to do. And that's what I think we all should be thankful he's doing. Because nobody right. better than Tony to do that. Doctor. Yeah, yes, let's sir. try and actually answer some simple and difficult questions. What are the clinical trials that are working? When will we have, have a vaccine? And are there drugs that actually will work in coming months to fight this? Last time I checked, there were over 157 clinical trials registered in clinicaltrials.gov. We don't know what's working. That's why you do a clinical trial. A clinical trial is something you do to see what works and what doesn't. When will we know? I would suspect in the next uh, six months or so, four to six months. It's going to take a while.